Hi, she's Trixie and I'm Sarah and this is Our Yarn World, a place where we come to share the love of yarn crafts and all that it gives us and what we hope it gives you. We're on episode 148 today and um, we are coming from a week that has been quite a roller coaster. Um, I got sick kids first week of school, brought home germs, they weren't feeling good, now I'm not feeling good, and despite the fact that you have orders to fill, ugh, it's, it's just been ugh. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's a busy week. And, um, yeah, so, but my mom, I gotta say, has been really going outside the box with some of her projects because... I feel like you get very inspired when it comes to the holidays to try something different. I've mm -hmm. noticed that over the years you tend to veer off your normal path of your projects always around I, the I holidays. Think I do. Like whether it be making the uh, the um, the windmills for a summertime, yeah. uh, the, uh, the, the wind, wind spinners. spinners. Or whether it be you trying something for Christmas, like the Christmas tree, yeah. or right now with what you're about to show, I feel like there's just something really cool about it all. So yeah, yeah. So um, with fall coming on, I wanted to make something a little different, and one for um, Olivia and one for Canyo. Well, I started with Canyos because I really liked the colors I was choosing. And um, I had been watching some YouTube videos on how to make crochet pumpkins. And I chose the one that I thought I could do. Um, it started out with watching one that was a granny square um, pumpkin. But you had to work in circles all the way around up. And I thought, um, I may still try that one. But I wanted something a little easier. So this one is working in a flat surface and then um, hooking it together and then cinching it at the bottom and filling it and then cinching it at the top. So that's what I did. And I used two colors, two strands, a 10 millimeter hook to make the pumpkin. And so I used, uh, oh gosh, I thought I got it out. Um, I used a variegated, um, it's kind of like camo. Yeah, camo colors. Actually, it's right here. Um, the variegated camo colors. And then I used a teal with it. And I thought it just turned out so so clever and then I found a, a stem um, that was something that you could crochet also because every other one that I was seeing was using a cinnamon stick. I didn't want that. I wanted something that was com completely crocheted and I didn't have any stuffing. So I went to, I, we have um, like a large garbage can that's full of the grocery bags, the plastic grocery bags that you get. So we've been saving those for eBay packaging and, and such. I just decided to stuff the pumpkins with the plastic grocery bags. And that's, that's Canyos. For Olivia's, I chose a, a very light um, peach and uh, variegated pinks and hers turned out really cute too I love that. and I also made the stem and the her. stem and the vine with the khaki um, camo. camo colors and so yeah it's just something that Nana can make for her grandchildren and so I decided to make one for my daughter as well and I found it's all kinds of muted autumn colors and if you look within 
you can see all these um, golds, there's muted golds and muted browns and muted rust colors and gray and greens and it all in this fluffy little probably three or two millimeter um, strands and so um, I started to do her pumpkin just in this alone and it was just I couldn't even pick out the the stitches and I told her I said I think we're gonna need a color with it so since I was here she went into her stash and she she found this um, Karen one pound and Cape Cod blue and so I'm still working on trying to make the rectangle and so you you go over as many stitches as you need to and the rectangle has to be three times as long as the width in order for the pumpkin to work so that's okay. I'm, I'm trying to get to that point and then I will make the circle and fill it in and it'll be all different variegated colors of autumn colors and then with the paired with the blue so that's what I'm working on right now and these don't take that long um, Canyons I had done in a couple hours Olivia's I had done in a couple hours if I had kept working on this I probably would have gotten it done in a couple hours too, but I started it yesterday I'll probably end it today. So it's it's a very short project if you wanted to make pumpkins You could do mm -hmm. that. I don't have any names. I watched a whole variety of different uh, crocheted pumpkins um, all kinds of videos from all kinds of different people found this stem from you know in one of those pumpkin videos so just um, watch watch the videos or um, you know maybe you could make something that's three times as long as it is wide and you know hook it together and then cinch it at the bottom cinch it at the top and make yourself a stem mm -hmm. even if it's just a cinnamon stick which they're adorable that those are adorable as well. It's but just it's not kid friendly. Yeah, and that was that was my whole thing. They're just gonna pull it out, and what's that gonna do? Right. You know. So I just figured I'm just gonna make it all crochet and make it easy, and they can have a decoration for their bedrooms, which they love to do. They love to decorate their own rooms. So that's what I did. And yeah, no. what are you? No. I'm almost, almost done with. So <laughs> exciting. Um, to go back to how you were describing it, it um, being made, making that long cloth and creating, it's almost like a flat two-dimensional thing and then creating it into the third dimension yeah. by making it elevated and raising up and and round and just yeah, yeah creating complete shape with something that was once flat yes yeah. I feel like there's something to that that yarn crafters are very good at when they're taking things and creating shapes with the flat uh, with something that's flat and then molding it into something that is beyond that two-dimensional shape and it's just so yeah I don't know it's so cool um, well, I feel like I brought this up last week. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did. All right, so what I am uh, currently doing is I am making an order for a relative of ours. Uh, my mother-in-law ordered from me to make this for a relative. <laughs> and she really likes characters from Lilo and Stitch. Specifically, ones that go past the first movie. So, there are Lilo and Stitch characters from the second movie, the third movie, I think there's a fourth, and there's a series, and those are... All the side characters. Y uh, yes, and one of them is an alien that is uh, 625, so yeah. the one right before 
a uh, stitch 60, uh, 66 whose name is Reuben. This little alien is known for loving to make sandwiches and is obsessed with sandwich making. Loves to eat them, loves to consume them, loves to make them. It's his passion. And doing so the uh and in that realm there that was one of my rel uh relatives uh favorites growing up was that alien. It, but he was, despite the popularity of the show and such, and despite the fact that he was quite literally a very on top of it main character, they've chosen other aliens to build up on that are much more... They don't necessarily have a very huge story plot as much as they just look familiar to Stitch more than this character. Despite the yeah. fact that this character is more prevalent in the story, they have chosen other characters to make into stuffies based off of the fact that they resemble Stitch or partner with Stitch. Okay. Aesthetically. Yeah. So, with that being said, I am in the current making of making my own Reuben. Isn't he cute? Um... I have not finished all his, like, antenna hairs, and he has a little bit more buckier teeth than maybe Ruben does, and I need to fill out more of the black for his eyes, but yes, I have been making a Ruben for this. He has this birth, uh, this mark on his back, and I plan to have a sandwich that he's holding, and yeah, I, I, I know I'm not doing a bad job for having no pattern and just kind of having to wing it. I know I'm not doing a bad job, but there's just that part of me of realizing that I'm sick and trying to push through and really having that perfectionist in me that wants a very specific end result. Yeah. And feeling like I don't have the energy to execute it and it's driving me nuts. And I know he's doing fine. I know this is still doing really good. I mean, for She's having... She's going to be so happy For with having that. nothing to begin with and having no other way of getting this character in any sort of a good sense, this is doing well, and I know it is, and I know it looks like the character, but it's just one of those, like, oh, I want it to be perfect because mm -hmm. not only is someone paying for this, but it's also supposed to embody something that this person is who has collected stitch memorabilia at, uh, most of her life has always wanted Reuben and I really want it to look good for her so I'm really yeah. hoping that it turns out well but um yeah I'm just working on him and yeah it's it's been a joy I think the one thing different from how you have been making flat two-dimensional things raising them up into the third dimension the one thing about the way that I craft is that I'm doing one layer at a time. It's almost like 3D printing. Yeah. Because I started at the bot at his, at his bottom, and I kept thinking, oh, well, I need to stop to make the legs so that I perfectly align where I need to love put them. Oh, I need to stop and make sure I don't forget to add, add, make a tail. Oh, I need to stop and make sure I have arms ready to sew on. Oh, I need to make sure that I know when I need to start the belly and need to start the spark. Oh, I need to know when to stop so I can start making the head. And I literally crocheted onto the body to start raising up and doing a head. Oh, I need to know when I need to have the ears. Oh, I need to be able to crochet the teeth on. It's been one of those things where it's like, it is literally each row is a layer. Just like a yeah. 3D printing machine of what's the next thing I can't forget to put on. Yeah. Because each layer might have something very specific that right. to that row. And, um... That's how my brain's been operating. So I know he's good. He wasn't even existing last week. It's just one of those when you're sick and you're groggy and you, you're a perfectionist at heart, you really want it good. My daughter said that she, she feels like the black needs to, be, needs to be a little bit more in the white. So I'll be taking one of my yarn needles and kind of getting a little bit more black in there. Because when I was crocheting the black pupil and then rising out, it was hard to get that perfect sizing with. Yeah. And so maybe sewing onto the top. Yeah. embroidering will actually execute what I was trying to do better than the just the crocheting itself and um yeah so I know he's looking good I know he's a chunky little guy and he'll have his sandwich and all this stuff but yeah 
All I know is that to all those other perfectionists out there, gotta give yourself grace. Yep. You gotta give yourself grace. And just keep going. Yep. You never know what you can do until you do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yep. for sure. So we have another um, quote today, and it says, My mother was the making of me. And that was said by Thomas Edison. Um, I chose this particular one today because um, of something Sarah said about her son, and she can explain that. But it's also been um, a week for me because on the 5th of September three years ago, my mom died. So within this week, I... and. Okay, let me explain a little bit further. And then on the 10th of September, my dad died four years ago. So four years and then three years. And they died within five days of each other. Um, so my mom was five days prior to my dad's death date. And that all happened this week. And it's been sending me into um, remembering stuff that I hadn't thought of for a while. And then um, Sarah was saying that, you know, things with her son were progressing. You know, he's in school now. He's shot up in size. He's um, he's doing so well with the teachers. He's eating better. He's just he's learning the rules of school and really likes to know the rules of school. And so there's just this thing that continues with Kenya was born the year that my dad died. Kenya was born in January of the year that my dad died in September. Um, my mom died one year later. So like a year and a half or so, a little, maybe a little bit more. He's never going to know who they were. Um, but life just keeps going. And I think um, for me, you know, my mother was the making of me. I think we all do come from our mothers. And maybe we learn so much from our moms, but we also learn independence and uh, growing up and moving away and doing things on our own. And I think that's where Sarah's at right now. Um, you know, we we did it with our own moms, and now she's got a, two children that are being brought up. Mm -hmm. So what's your view? My mother-in-law made a very specific point of your job as a mom is to put yourself out of a job. Yeah. It is to have your children be independent of you. And that every single time you cross a new milestone in the making of that goal, there is a pride and a grieving because it's one step away from you. And even though you want to see that growth it is bittersweet. Yes. And, um... I am very grateful for, you know, this opportunity to experience this. My son has made such intense growth this year. Um, his birthday was in January, and he wasn't even willing to be pie trained. He wasn't even willing to be, I mean, last year... 
and school time we were trying to think about putting him into some sort of a daycare or something to kind of give him some sort of structure because he was being there were so many behaviors that was like okay we need to offer him something that sh it gives him an opportunity to be around peers and have that yeah. mirroring where he's able to kind of maybe take on maybe a structure of realizing what he should be looking at as normal instead of just being catered to at home where we might not be realizing, you know, things that he could be getting away with that yeah. might be better off if he had been around other kids his own age. But it just didn't work out, and that was fine. But it was one of those things where it was like he was not willing to use the restroom. He was so stubbornly yeah. holding on yes. to that to the point where it was like a a strong-willed argument with him about getting rid of the diapers despite of all the things that we were doing to pie train him he was not taking on to it and the day that we did his party I was not aware but someone uh, I think it was my mother-in-law it had one of his gifts was um, underwear yeah. And they put him in it, and I wasn't aware of it. And then he had an accident. And my husband br made him bring them, uh, had them in a bag, made him bring him home, made him have to clean them in the sink. And this whole entire process of actually having to do it himself. And something about the idea that it was a gift. Like, he had had underwear up until that point, but the fact that it was a gift and the fact that it was a challenge of whether he could keep them clean or that he would have to take care of them. Something about them being a gift, something about the fact that if he wants to be four, this is part of the th uh, thing of yeah. being four. Like, all that sort of messaging that, despite all the work that I had done, there would have been, it was like a crest. There was a peak. He had finally hit it, and that week, he was pie trained. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, the only thing I have to do is maybe help him when he goes, you know, he needs to be wiped. And then with school, they're just like, no, he has to be able to do it by himself. And he has taken that as a challenge and is now doing that. And I'm not trying to be, you know, giving TMI too much information yeah. here. But, you know, as any parent who's had to teach even just the pie training aspect of it, or just any other thing where it is independent, where it's like... You have to put your clothes on on your own or you have maybe let them go fill up their water cup on their own or, oh, mommy, I want to help cook. And you're so used to just getting it done by yourself because it's faster that taking that moment yeah. to just slow down and be like, okay, yesterday <laughs> we did that. Yesterday we... We made grilled cheese sandwiches and Olivia chose not to put her movie on to let Canyon have his movie on. And we went into the in there and she helped me count all the pieces of bread that we needed, counted all the many pieces of cheese that we needed, and she helped me assemble. And then when it was her turn, or when it was her piece of grilled cheese cooked, because I cooked it and I buttered, um, I had her cut it hers in half and she got to go sit down and eat what she had made yeah now Kaniel did not want to go cheese he wanted a peanut butter sandwich so I made him come over he had to get his pieces out and I used a spoon because one of my old bosses from daycare always said teach kids to spread with spoons because you can scoop it put it on and spread it with yep. the same instrument don't do a, 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 yep. a knife because it's gonna be so much harder for them yeah and we really don't want them to be with knives and I was like okay cool so I've always kept that in my head take the spoon do it it's much more controlled motion because trying to balance stuff on the knife is yeah. not always easy either so it's yeah. like setting kids up for success and even adults it's always I've used spoons since that moment <laughs> it, I love you Miss Jill um but when I did that and I showed him, take the peanut butter, you scoop it onto the bread, and you take it. And he was trying to, I saw him struggling because he was taking only the end part of the peanut butter that was closest to where it needed to be spreaded and taking only that. And I showed him how to press down and spread it all the way across so that it was evenly distributed. And then all he had to do was bring it to the corners. Oh. Uh, and he was just like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's just like, oh, oh, this is so cool because it's like painting on yeah. bread. And he was just so fascinated. And then we put the two pieces together. And then I was like, now you're going to cut it. Do you want to do it in squares or triangles? And he's like, oh, I want to do triangles. So I showed him that he could indent the bread before he cut it with uh, the butter knife. And he did that. And then he it cut one of the uh, triangle pieces into another triangle piece. And I was like, okay, well, you do it with the other one. He's like, no, I want three triangles exactly. And he put the uh, the knife away, grabbed his plate, and he ran, and he went and got and eat. And he ate it because he was so wow. proud of making it. Yeah. And there was something about that where I was like, again, I'm at another uh, part of my journey where maybe having them make simple meals for themselves yeah. will create this autonomy. It's it's not only autonomy, but there's also a pride, yeah. a good, a good sense of being proud of themselves, and also this act of independence that will maybe promote them to eating better things. Because yeah. the, the things that they've always eaten on their own have always been things that have been convenient. Now they have to take the time to make it exactly. and it might help their patience and their and their creativity and their understanding of food and it's just one of those things where it's like they've been asking me since yesterday so can we start cooking with you and I'm like I guess every single day I'll find something that you can do to help me cook yeah and I don't know it's just those small little things where it's like I remember when you taught me how to cook and I guess I've been in this, in the motions where you just do it for them because you know it will get done compared to here's your clothes, go get dressed. Here's this, make sure you've gone to the bathroom. Oh, is everything in your bag? Okay, Olivia, you can go get your water filled up. I don't have to do that for you. Yeah. I just need you. I, I, these are your choice. These are the things that need to be done before we're heading out the door. It's now like a... Now they're asking for chores too, and, and that, yeah. it, you have to think of things to for them to do, and it's a little harder. Well, so. it's just I don't know. A mom's job is to make it so that you don't have to have one anymore yeah. in their lives. Not that you'll never not be their mom, but that it. I know my mom has always said, when you have a kid, your goal is not only to raise them up, but eventually they will go from being your kid to being your friend. Yeah. Because not that the mom and child role will ever change, but their independence will increase to the point where you will have common ground. Yeah. And you'll be able to share time with each other instead of taxing one another. Yeah. Because one person will be taking on more of the caring role. It's now, there's a little bit more of a mutual. Yeah. A mutual thing. So, yeah. So, my mother was the making of me, said by Thomas Edison. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. I think that we are just it at, for today. It's just the creativity. It's the continuing down. Yeah. I mean, my daughter's now really interesting in her knitting and it. I, and all crafts. All yeah. art. She wants yeah. to be an artist when she grows up. Yeah, that's her new thing. She says she wants to be an artist because she wants to be able to create things when she grows up. And I'm like, well, you're in the right family. So. And really, Canyon wants to build things. He wants to create things too. So Yeah, it just in his own way. Yeah. So, you know, it just it's just that time of year to take the time to realize how far you've gone. Because being in this part of my life where my kids are actually at school and I have this moment, it's been like very rewarding to realize that we've I've worked up to this point. We started the channel when they were just tiny babies. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, for anyone who's w uh, watched it all the way to this point and just have been here for our rambling, thank you. Yes. And we appreciate all of you. And if any of you have anything to share based off of what we've talked about yeah. or just how, where you're at in your project or if you have any fall themed things that you've been doing uh, recently. Or, or even Christmas gifts, have you started those? Or just all the things of getting back to school and what does that look like for your hobby life. Just yeah. share with us if you would like. Um, 
we will see you next week with obviously where we're at then and all the things we're hoping to share with you then. Um, maybe we'll do a very specific fall themed episode. Yeah. Because we haven't done something like that in a while. So yeah. look forward to that. And as always, we hope that you do well, that your projects are turning out exactly as you exactly. want, and that you stitch your way to mental health.